What up, my good glops? So, <clears throat> being as that, that I started on vacation today, and I've been drinking and kind of working on the car. I figured I'd make a video, because I haven't made one in a while. And I wanted to go over some of the stuff that I've been doing and mocking up whatnot. Um, so let's get to it. So I wanted to show you guys the turbo and wastegate cooler setup that I have. Uh, all my hose ends I already figured out. Um, so from the pump or from the reservoir to the cooler and the, the uh, little pump that I plan on using, which I'm trying to find a pump that I can get an inlet and outlet of a dash six. But so far I haven't been able to find one. So I might end up using a 1.5 liter Prius inverter pump um, so that I can pull uh, fluid from the reservoir to that and then push it through the system. So <clears throat> what I plan on doing, since Garrett uh, says that one of the biggest things that kills their turbos the most is the heat cycles from when the engine is turned off and there's nothing flowing through it or they didn't let their engine cool down enough and the turbo just starts you know swelling the seals on the inside and whatnot so this is designed so that i can keep the turbo on its own cooler separate from the engine as well as with the circuit that i have planned um i can have the, the oh, what's it called? Have the coolant keep flowing even after the key is out of the ignition. So uh, I have a thermostatic switch sitting on the turbo um, with positive going through a 10 amp fuse, connecting between 30 on a relay and one side of my thermostatic switch. When this 30 static switch closes, um, it allows 85 to generate, gener gen Jesus Christ, I'm so drunk, <laughs> energize, and then 30 and 85 close 87 alpha, and allow power to flow through 87, powering my pump, my pump and my fan. Now, once the switch closes, then ground comes up and eats everything and it shuts it off. So when I turn the engine off, uh, or when I turn the ignition off, coolant should still keep flowing until that turbo hits 165 degrees, which is nice. That's, that's plenty. I might end up finding a different thermostatic switch to bring it down lower, but if I find a switch that hits lower, then it's going to activate sooner and I don't want this turbo you know, activating it like when it sees 120 degrees. I want it to sit about 180 degrees. And then of course, going through the whole system. Um, so with the wastegate and everything, the wastegate's gonna get uh, chilled down as well so I can keep my duty cycles nice and long and I don't have to worry about that. So let me, let me give you guys a rundown, physically show you what's going on. I'm sorry I don't have a pointer, but whatever. So here is my cooler. There's my reservoir. I have a swirl tank built in on the reservoir. Um, on the bottom, if you can see here, there's two outlets. One, This one's gonna get plugged. This one's gonna go straight to, it's gonna come in straight to the pump. The pump's gonna go through the turbo and as well as the wastegate come back into the top portion right here of this cooler, come through the cooler, and then go right back into the swirl tank of this expansion tank. And yeah, so the cooling system for the, the turbo, the standalone cooling system for the turbo is gonna be really nice and neat. Um, here's the turbo, I have my thermostatic switch. I have my dash six little piece and there's a dash six that sits on the other side. So everything's going to be dash six. Uh, one of the things that Garrett wants to talk about, and if you read some of their stuff for their turbos is they recommend clocking your turbo no more than 20 degrees um, to get ma maximum thermal siphoning out of this turbo. 
So on the turbo right here, I have my, uh, let's see, I have the top portion uh, for the pullout for the return and the bottom portion is plugged. And on the opposite side, let's see if we can see. I have the top plugged and the bottom is what's gonna feed. So even with this turbo clocked 20 degrees, the coolant's actually gonna come up grab as much heat as possible and since heat rises is going to come up to this top portion hopefully i'm correct and it pulls as much heat out as quickly as possible is as, as good as possible i guess you could say so that should take care of the standalone cooling system um i got the engine sitting in the engine bay only because i needed to mock up one I have, I, don't, well, I mean, obviously you could tell I have my intercooler in. Uh, there's nothing holding it in except the, the two mounts that I have right now. The middle mount I welded and it walked on me and it just wasn't lining up. So I deleted it. So I'm going to take this and make it a little thing to help hold the uh, front guard shielding or what do they call it? The front channel, I guess, going to the turbo. So it's nice and flush and I don't have to worry about any air coming through the bumper and escaping anywhere because I don't need it going all over the place. I have my front dash 20 for the feed going in. Deleted my, uh, my alternator got moved to this side obviously, but I deleted the water pump so I have more room for the turbo and everything. But the water pump's gonna sit here, pull from the radiator, push straight through the engine go through the engine and then it's going to come out of the cylinder head down and all the way back to the radiator. So what I'm trying to figure out now is the water pump, which is a Mazir 55 gallon per minute remote. And it's, it's really nice. Um, I don't want it to flow 55 gallons per minute at idle. So what I want to do is I'm trying to design a series circuit that's going to allow me to run eight volts to it, kind of like how the fuel pump relay or the fuel pump ECU is on the Supras. So with the engine on running, um, the water pump's going to see eight gallons or eight volts at most. And then once the engine hits to operating temperature, which is probably going to be 180 or maybe 190 and I'll probably get a switch to cut it down to 170. Um, that, that pump will see full 12 volts and full 55 gallons per minute and push straight through to help cool this engine down. Um, with the radiator sitting all the way in the trunk, I don't know if it's gonna cycle back and forth constantly, which would kill this pump. And that's something that I gotta call Mazir about and see what they recommend. I also plan on having a, a thermostat that opens up at 170 just to kind of keep it in the middle so that that pump doesn't have to worry about pushing too much fluid, um, which is why I'm worried because if I flow 55 gallons per minute constantly with this engine running, then it will never get hot. Like, this engine will never hit operating temperature and my fail safes for the turbo setup will never kick in. So I'll never hit specific boost pressures or anything of that nature. So um, that's pretty much the gist for the cooling system. Um, I am working on making mounts right now for the turbo. Uh, let's get this up. So the, the radiator is dash 20 uh, on the inlet and outlet and then I had my buddy weld a uh, dash or not a dash I want to say a 16 millimeter which makes this a 19 or 18 or whatever this is what will hold it in and then I'm going to cut the mounts for the rear from the front because I don't need them anymore because this isn't going in the front but uh, since the radiator is going to sit all the way back here and have fans and all sorts of stuff, and then I'm going to have my scoop come in from here, go through, and then the side scoops come in. 
should be good. And then since I have the opening there, I'm going to channel everything correctly. Hopefully it works out perfectly well. I still have to get the uh, engine. It needs to be decked. It needs to be honed. Uh, it needs to be line honed with the spun bearings. Uh, what really got me was the fact that the crank mic'd out really well. Like everything is factory spec. So I'm going to reuse the crank. I'm going to use, depending on how well the line hone goes, goes for the engine, I might get HX bearings since I plan on going 10 w 30 with the uh, turbo and everything cause, just because I want a little bit of free movement. And then for the rods, oh, the rods. Um, number five and number six are all blonged ever so slightly. They're still usable. However, I don't know if I want to use them. Like, they can get machined, and then I could just use oversized bearings. I mean, really, I can just use oversized bearings on all of those once they get machined down. But um, for now... I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. So uh, I'm still trying to figure out the rest of the stuff. The cylinder head is warped ever so slightly, so it's got to get decked. Uh, let me see if I could show you. I had a lot of issue right here on the head gasket for the number six cylinder. And right there, I don't know if you could see it. Right there. Right there. So I, I blew my head gasket, exhaust gases were getting into the cooling system and that's what overheated my engine. So, but um, I ordered more gold tape to do finish out the rear. I got shielding for the sides here. Uh, once the turbo gets in, we'll have that done. Uh, 4D engineering is building my manifold at the moment. And then I just gotta get the wastegate obviously put on for the manifold and then everything will be complete but uh that's pretty much it oh and i gotta make the channeling for the intercooler i gotta make a small brace for the bottom of the bumper that's sitting over there um because the air is going to come in straight through the bumper and then come straight up and then out the hood so there should be no air being in this engine bay. But uh, that's pretty much it. So y'all have a good day.